Well, hello again. It's been a while since we've done a PowerPoint for gases. And what I'm trying to do right now is to do a PowerPoint that will help you solve any gas law problems for Charles, Boyles, and Gay-Lussac. Maybe I'll have time for the combined gas law as well. This is especially important for those of you who might have missed class due to standardized testing. And please note I'll be referring to which worksheets you need to do by the name of the worksheet itself. So, when we studied Charles' Law, and if you do the graph on the worksheet that says Charles' Law, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature. That's what that equation shows there. Basically, they're saying that the hotter and hotter that you make a gas, then the greater and greater the volume would be. And that's what's being expressed in that ratio. Now, that's not terribly helpful, so the equation that we're going to use is the one on the left-hand side. So right here, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Ones will stand for initial values. Twos will stand for final values. So V1 means first starting volume, and T1 means the initial temperature. Very important, change the temperature into Kelvin by adding 273. V2 and T2 stand for, hey, what would the volume be if now we have a different temperature? And typically, three out of the four values are given. You find the fourth one through simple eighth grade algebra. So that's a Charles Law problem. Here's a lovely picture of Charles himself. And the thing about Charles Law problems and any other of these gas law problems is that you always assume that the number of moles of the gas are constant. Now, we graphed something different. Our axes had temperature on the horizontal or x-axis and uh, volume on the vertical. But as you can see, as the temperature decreases, the volume shrinks. And as the temperature increases, the volume increases. And that's essentially what Charles' Law tells us. Notice on the left-hand side, and this is very key, see the blue dial <coughs> Excuse me. that shows pressure? Notice how that's not changing. You can always recognize a Charles Law problem by the fact that they neither mention pressure or possibly they say the words pressure remains constant. Then it's very simple. So I think you could probably answer that middle check. Obviously, if you increase the temperature, volume increases. But guess what? When you double the temperature, the volume will be doubled. And make sure, as I said before, to put your temperatures in Kelvin. Remember the Kelvin scale? It's based upon zero Kelvin. That's a temperature at which all motion of molecules will cease. So we call that absolute zero. And remember we learned that you had to add 273 to the Celsius temperature. And on some of these trickier problems, and they're not that tricky, you might have to solve for a temperature in Kelvin and then turn it back into Celsius by subtracting. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this graph because, yeah, so what? I graph temperature and volume in degrees Celsius, and I guess mathematically, technically, that's not a direct proportion, and I guess it has something to do with the fact that your line is not intersecting at the origin. If, however, you show the graph when you change it into Kelvin, which, by the way, this graph is showing absolute zero is at 273 degrees below zero on the Celsius scale, and we call that, if you look down here in the bottom, zero Kelvin. Is volume directly proportional with the Kelvin temperature? Apparently yes, because that line with a positive slope will intersect at zero at the origin. But regardless, here's a lovely picture showing that increasing the temperature in Kelvin will cause a proportional increase in volume. Please make sure that on the worksheet that says Charles Law, you've completed the table converting Celsius to Kelvin temperatures, and you've created a graph that looks something similar to this. As we said, the temperature in Celsius is added to 273. That's a very interesting trademark symbol there. I think that was supposed to be in degrees Celsius. Water obviously will freeze at 0 Celsius or 273 Kelvin, that's a capital K, and water would boil at 100 plus 273 or 373 Kelvin. That's a rerun, went through it kind of quickly. Now here's how a Charles Law problem works, and they're just this easy. I like to make a list. It says a sample of gas has a volume of 79.5. 
milliliters at 45 degrees Celsius. Well, that's your V1 and your V2. Notice that compulsively you've changed Celsius into Kelvin by adding 273. What will the volume occupy? Well, that's this guy, V2. And I don't know what it is. At the, if the temperature, though, is 0 degrees Celsius. And now you can see why we have to add 273. You can't have a 0 in the denominator. So it's V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now, I like to teach my students a sound called pivot. And that's the combined gas law in which is hidden all three of the basic gas laws. But notice that it didn't measure, mention pressure at all, or it will specifically say pressure is constant. Let's guesstimate what might happen if I take the temperature at 45 and chill it down to zero, I bet the volume of my gas is going to shrink. And a quick check if you do your cross multiply and divide will indeed tell you that the new volume is 68.3 milliliters, down from the original 79.5. So what you should look for in your notebook is a worksheet that says at the top, basic gas laws. There are six problems on this worksheet. Two of them are Charles' law. Take a moment, pause this podcast, and go find the two. Once you've found them, identify them on the line as being Charles' law, and take a moment to solve them, not forgetting to convert temperature from Celsius into Kelvin. Now I'm going to assume you're back after having done those two problems <clears throat> on Charles' law. Let's take a look at Boyle's law. I like to use dumb mnemonics, so for me I like to say Charles is on TV. That means his law is about the relationship between temp and pressure. And Charles' law was a direct proportion. Increase the temperature, excuse me, between temperature and volume. Increase the temperature, volume increases. Decrease the temperature, volume decreases. That's pretty straightforward. Boyle's law shows the relationship between volume and pressure. So I have another dumb mnemonic. Boyle is the VP. In a Boyle's law problem, Increasing the pressure, assuming you have a container that can contract and expand, squeezing on a gas more is going to shrink its volume. So Boyle's law is the only one of the three that is an inverse proportion. Increase pressure, volume decreases. Let's take a look at that graph. So as weather balloons are released from the surface of the planet, atmospheric pressure is less and less on them, and as they rise up into the atmosphere, the weather balloon will begin to expand. Here you can see <clears throat> that if we start with 22.4 liters of a gas, if I double the atmospheric pressure, or excuse me, the pressure measured in atmospheres, then I cut the volume in half. Double the pressure again, cut the volume in half. So Boyle's law, is showing that there's an inverse relationship between greater pressure and less volume. Here's that again shown for you in a different graphical form. But rather than talk about it in sort of relative sense, let's go ahead and do a calculation. Now if you want to pause at this point and look for another worksheet entitled Boyle's Law, it will have data on it that ask you to graph the relationship between pressure and volume. I'm not sure it's graphed the same way because for me, pressure would be the independent variable and volume the dependent. But go ahead and look for that. Bottom line is, graph that, understand that this is the only one of the three that is an indirect or inverse proportion, and here is our law. Boyle's law says that volume is inversely proportional to pressure. This time, <coughs> The pressure times the volume will always equal a constant, and you'll see an opportunity to practice that on that worksheet. Another way to express this law is P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. This time, there is no mention of temperature at all. Temperature is constant. And as a reminder, remember, on all three of these basic gas laws, the number of moles of a gas are constant. So according to Boyle's law, when you and I breathe, what's going to happen is that I just inhaled, and the way I inhaled is that I raised and lowered this muscle called the diaphragm that's inside my chest cavity. And so if I can move that muscle that reduces pressure inside my lungs, air from the atmosphere flows in. 
And if I can move that muscle to increase the pressure inside my chest cavity, then air flows out. If you are the terrible victim of something called a pneumothorax or a sucking chest wound, a hole in your chest cavity, you don't have a sealed container in there anymore and your diaphragm muscle, work as hard as it might, won't be able to allow you to breathe because you can't reduce or increase the pressure because the air is leaking out through your chest cavity. What a lovely thought. So by Boyle's Law, we are able to breathe. So here's an example of Boyle's Law. What volume will 50 milliliters of gas at 725 torr occupy if the pressure is increased to 760 torr? Not worded as clearly, but make a list. Your list should say V1, P1, V2, P2. Well, my V1 is 50 milliliters of gas. My P1 is 725 torr. Apparently, I don't know the ending volume, so V2 is a question mark, and I bet if I increase the pressure to the P2, 760 torr, I will see the volume probably decrease. Here are my values. Punch them into the equation. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. The pressure units can be in any unit as long as the P1 units are the same as the P2. So you could use atmospheres or kilopascals or tor. When you solve for V2, indeed 47.7 milliliters is a smaller volume because the person cranked up the pressure a little bit. Okay, so is that reasonable? Yep, pressure increases, volume should decrease. And that is our Boyle's Law. Now I'm going to pause at this moment because if you go to Basic Gas Laws Worksheet, remember it has six problems on it, you should now be able to locate the two problems that are Boyle's Law. Key hint, they will say nothing about temperature or they will specifically state temperature is constant. Take a moment to solve those two problems. When you have finished doing those four problems total, two of Charles and two of Boyle's, you should now look in your notebook for another worksheet. One side says Charles' Law and the other side says Boyle's Law. And these are actual problems that you need to solve. Don't confuse them with the graphing of Charles and Boyle's. Since I think I'm making pretty good time on this podcast, I'd like to go to the last law. So we had Charles is on TV, <coughs> Pressure is constant. <coughs> Boyle is the VP. Temperature is constant. So the third value that we haven't considered yet, or the relationship between, is temp and pressure. So that's why I call Gay-Lussac's law, Gay-Lussac got TP'd. This time, in a Gay-Lussac problem, if it's the relationship between temperature and pressure, then if you look at our graphic on the right-hand side, Notice that if someone is increasing the temperature of this container here, it's going to take greater and greater pressure to hold it to the same volume. Or another way to say that is, take a solid container whose volume cannot expand. Heat it up. The moment you do that, the gas particles speed up, hit the walls of the container more often and with greater force, and the pressure inside increases. So the relationship between temperature and pressure is a direct relationship. Charles and Gay-Lussac are both directly proportional to temperature, and Boyle's Law is an inverse relationship between volume and pressure. So here is Gay-Lussac's Law. Here is a lovely picture of Gay-Lussac. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. I prefer using the method that's shown on the left-hand side. Don't write it this way. The reason why is we're going to learn the combined gas law mnemonic, pivot which has all three gas laws hidden in it, and it's much easier to understand with the expression on the left. Let's take this one sort of quickly. Apparently I have a starting pressure of, 700 millimeters of mer 760 millimeters of mercury. That MMHG is just telling you they used a, a manometer to measure it. Apparently the temperature to start with is 22. Now let's not that grain, let that grain elevator volume change, so the volume in this point in time is going to stay constant. 
What would the new pressure be if you cranked it up to 400 degrees Celsius? By the way, I would not want to be near that green elevator. Gay-Lussac's law says that as you increase temperature, you will have a proportional increase in volume. Oops, this isn't the right Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law is temp and pressure. We have a definite typo in the uh, PowerPoint. Ignore this slide. Okay, there we go. Increase the temperature, pressure increases. Here is our first Gay-Lussac's problem. And it says, pressure 1 is 760. Temperature 1 is 22, immediately add 273. Pressure 2 is 400, or uh, temperature 2 is 400 degrees Celsius. Let's set that up and show the relationship. Apparently it's not shown, so let's do it from scratch. P1 would be 760. T1 would be 273 plus 22. That's 295 in my book. P2 is, I don't know. And T2 would be 400 plus 273 or 673. So all three of these basic gas laws have four values in the expression. In this case, P2 is the only missing value. Cross multiply and divide eighth grade algebra. That is a great stopping point for our vodcast about gas laws and I will see you tomorrow. Please make sure that you complete basic gas laws which has two of every type Charles Boyle Gay-Lussac. Complete the front and back of a worksheet that says Charles on one side Boyle's on another with three problems each and then look through your notebook there is another worksheet that says something like basic and combined gas law, and I'll discuss the combined gas law when I see you next. Take care.